Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Birchall. Welcome to my art studio. Today is a gray, rainy day on Vancouver Island, and so it's a perfect day to get into my studio and clean and organize. So I found myself starting to organize my stamps. And I promise you that there will be a organizing video coming up soon, so Make sure you subscribe, click on the bell, and select the option to be notified of upcoming videos. And that way, you won't miss it. But today's video is going to be something that you've asked me for, and it's been on the to-do list, and I just decided that today is the day. I am going to bring to you my top 10, give or take, stamps that I use in my mixed media canvases in my art journal. These are ones that I reach for time and time again. You've seen me use them. They, in my estimation, are good value for those crafting dollars. So if you're just starting out, don't know what to buy, what are the basics, this will give you a bit of an idea about what is going to be a real workhorse in your mixed media art journal stash. So I'm going to flip the camera down, grab out my stamps, and we'll get to demoing them. I can, I'm going to show you what they look like, and we'll go from there. By the way, all the links to the stamps that I'm recommending will be in the description box below if you want to get a closer look at them. Thank you so much for shopping my Amazon links. It doesn't cost you more, but I do get a small commission. Just want to be completely transparent about that. But what you also need to know is while when I link a certain product, buy a certain vendor, the prices may change. There may be that same product at a better price point. So do a little comparison shopping and make the most out of your crafting dollars. So what you're looking at here is a pile of treasured and well-loved stamps. This is my top 10 stamps. Now, if you are stamping, I highly recommend Archival Ink. It is a permanent ink. It is my go-to ink. And I want to make sure that when I'm stamping, I am putting it in permanent ink because I We'll be putting many layers afterwards and I don't want it to smear. More times than not, when you see me creating on an art journal page or on a canvas, you will see me not using ink. You will see me using acrylic paint. And I spread out the acrylic paint on my craft mat with a palette knife and I take the stamp and stamp into it and put that on my page or on my canvas. One, I like that I can use the stamps then with any color, and I have all the colors of the rainbow in my acrylic paints, not so much with the stamp pads. It's a little bolder, and you get a little bit of texture with that. So, what I'm going to do is, for the most part, I'm going to stamp with these to show you the patterns of my top 10 favorite stamps. But I will demo how to stamp with acrylic paint, just in case you haven't seen it on one of my videos. So, what you're looking at here is stamp number one. Now, this is, I believe it was Stamp Pendus, but I found the same one, and I'll put a link to it in in the description box, it's an Inka Dinka Doo polka dot background stamp, and it is a large size. I and it was on a wooden block. Now I took it off the wooden block by just putting it in the microwave for a bit and peeling it off. Then I just put some um, mylar on the back of it, and I cut it into two pieces because now I, when I'm teaching classes, I two people can have this for their background. So when I use acrylic paint, which I dare say that I do most of the time, I just put some on my craft mat, like you see me doing here, and I spread it out. 
and I take my stamp and I press that in and I stamp with it. I love using this, this stamp with black, with white, with gold. Now when I use the ink, you don't get it quite as dark. But I've done both and you can. Now when it comes to cleaning this, all I do is I take my Murphy's Oil Soap and Dish Detergent, the mixture that I have always at the ready, I spray it on and I just wipe it off. Now I'm using this for mixed media. I'm not using it on cards and I don't need a pristine stamp. So I clean it as well as I can. Every once in a while I may soak this and spray it and use a stencil brush and get in there a little bit more, but it's not exactly perfectly clean. So that one again, Inka Dinka Doo, um, polka dot background. The next one that I have is Coastal Escape, and this is from Kaiser Craft, and it looks like fishnet, but it is perfectly great background. I've used it on Christmas cards. I've used it as a very general thing. It doesn't necessarily read coastal is what I want to say. So while I still have some of this black paint, I'm going to put that on. I love putting this on as a top layer and doing it in gold. And again, just a quick spritz. and clean and away we go. Now most of the time when I'm stamping with the acrylics, with anything, I'm not looking for that pristine look. So I don't, if it smudges a little, if it globs a little, I'm okay with that because this is going to be part of the background. Most of the stamps that I'm showing you are background stamps. They're things that you're going to be putting in the background or they're just going to be those little details that you're going to add. So that's Coastal Escape, number two, Kaiser Craft. The next one that we have is great, great, great value for your money. It is a Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz set. This one is Mixed Media 2. He has two sets and I believe there's four in Mixed Media 1 and four in this one. So it's a good basic one that you can use again any background, any art journal page, not theme specific. So we'll just demo these and I'm just going to switch to the ink right now because it's just going to be easier for cleanup. So we have the line. I'm just going to move that up. Now you can put these on blocks. When I am doing mixed media in my art journal pages, typically, again, these are not something I'm doing. I'm usually doing parts of it, and I don't want it so, I don't want a perfect square. There's a different circle. So you have four. So that is a great set. And I will put a link to both his, his set number one as well as the one I've just shown you. The next one that we have is by Sam Pendis and it is Foliage Cube. And it is on a wooden block and it has four different foliage types. And I love all of them. I've done them on the backgrounds if I'm doing a field or grasses or leaves or wheat. 
So that is absolutely great. Love this one. I love the, I love them all. So that Stampendous Foliage Cube. Number four is Fabulous Flourish. Now any swirl, I love swirls. This one is a Fabulous Flourish because again, look at the size of this. This is five inches by four inches. Now I could put this on a block and stamp the whole thing if I wanted to. I'm just going to put some tape on here. I have it on. Oops. I'm not sure how great we're going to get a stamp here. I don't know if I've inked it up quite enough. But it's a beautiful flourish. This is great for making um, tissue paper, designer tissue papers. More times than not, I just take parts of this and I'm applying it like that. Love this one. Fabulous Flourish and it's Hero Arts. So that was five of my favorite stamps. Let's go on to the next one. This is Honeycomb by Kaisercraft. Now again, you might recognize I have stencils that are very similar to this and often I'll use the same kind or shape of stencil as stamp. And there we go, Honeycomb by Kaisercraft, number six. Number seven is another favorite. This one's Harlequin. This one's from Stamping Up, but I, if I can't find the link to Stamping Up, I will find similar ones. There are other brands. This one is kind of distressed a little bit, which I love. And again, most times I don't want a complete square of it. I just want a little bit of a hint of it, the middle part. And so something like that will show up in three, you know, three places on my page. So number seven, stamping up Harlequin print. Number eight, and I would dare say this is my top one, script stamps. Get some script stamps. They are so versatile. I have to actually stop myself from grabbing them too often. This one is old letter writing, and it's Hero Arts. This one is Darkroom Door, and it's called Elegant Script. And old letter writing, looks is exactly what it sounds like especially if I'm doing something vintage it's just that old letter writing but it's very small and then I was in search of something bigger and so I found this darkroom door one which has become another fast favorite it's just a larger script but you can actually read it says, let love rule. So there's some nice words, but they're very flourishy. And then in a set that I found just in a yard sale, they just had some other scripts. So you can collect many. This is a case of you want to have different amounts, different styles, different fonts. One thing that I would like to get is just some text script. So script stamps, absolute in my world, necessities. And you can see they're not exactly clean. So that's number nine. 
number t or uh, number eight. Now the next two are kind of my favorite focal image stamps. I love doing butterflies and dragonflies. And so if you've got something like that that you love lots, if that's roses, if that's sunflowers, you may wish to spend more money on getting a stamp for that because you're going to simply use it a lot. If it's something that you're going to do once, you may question whether you should get it. But butterflies, I get my, you know, I do enough butterflies with that. This one is absolutely gorgeous. It is, it's called Majestic Butterfly. It is by Kaiser Craft, but it's, I love it because it's huge. And when you're doing an art journal page, even a 7x10 or 11 by 14, you want something that's a little bit larger. A lot of stamps are intended for cards. So when you're doing them on art journal pages or on canvases for focal images, you're somewhat limited. This one is four and a half by three inches. It's absolutely gorgeous. And as the name says, Mag Mag Majestic Butterfly. So I'm just going to stamp that down and it's gorgeous. Now I can paint this. I can paint it with watercolors. I can paint it if I stamp this on watercolor paper and then I can cut it out or mixed media paper and paint it. I can paint the paper first and then stamp it out and then cut out my butterfly. But it's just so worth it. And this is by Kaiser Craft. So that's number nine and number 10 is the dragonfly this is from crafters companion and again this dragonfly i was searched and searched is three and a three quarters inches across by three inches so it's absolutely gorgeous it's a nice size you get lots of detail a little more realistic than many of the dragonfly stamps And then you get the cute two sizes, which I love because now I can put one of the big ones and I can put some of the little ones. So that is number 10. Another stamp that I like, and you know I couldn't keep it to 10, but another stamp that I like is this Peacock Feather. It, this is a Stampendous stamp, and I have used this in the background, pushed back where you barely see it. I've used it in the, as a focal image. I've used it on to make feathers for a dream catcher. I've used it to put make the tail of a peacock when I did the head and it's just one of those stamps that I absolutely love. So I'm pushing that on to you. If you love peacocks, it's a it's a must have. Another thing that you're going to want to build up is some letter or alphabet stamps of varying sizes. Now I bought some fancier ones and I regret buying those. What I like using and what I reached for the most are these block ones. These are grunge ones, but the size of these work so well on an art journal page. So I love them. I also have some that are very, very tiny. I've got, and it's just, you know, very much like typewriter size, different sizes. And I just keep them there and I can stamp. So we have that one. This one is also a script stamp. So it looks like cursive writing, especially when you're using the lowercase letters. They flow together. And I'm just going to do a demo of that. I'll just build a word and I will come back. I 
couldn't do a stamping video if I didn't also give you a heads up about a couple other stamps that I purchased that I find I really get my use out of. Now you're going to have to look at yourself and ask whether you're going to get your money's worth. But I hemmed and hawed about getting Tim Holtz's Crazy Birds and Crazy Cats. I absolutely love this. If you've seen my videos, you've seen tons and tons of videos with me using these birds. They can take on any sentiment. I, you put two or three on there, it can be on a five by seven or a larger, or larger sheet. Same thing with the cats. They just make me smile. I definitely, as a creator, using it for craft fairs, I have gotten my money out of this tenfold. And it just, they're just so easy and lovable. I just, I, I really enjoy them. They're good quality. Um, so I'm just passing that along for whatever that's worth. The other thing that I've gotten a lot of my value out of are my uh, Prima Marketing, my Julie Nutting dolls. Now I have two, five, I think I have six of them. But I have used these again when I'm making craft fairs, making art journal pages, putting sassy comments, making my wine tags. I have used these and used these and used these. And I've used them full length on art journal pages. They're a nice size. I've used them partially um, on four by fours. So I, again, it's something that I have definitely gotten my value from them. 